Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Yujito were soulmates, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Monster a drunken villager shouted, shaking a broken bottle. Demon. Let's finish what the fourth started a bottle was thrown, its content flying everywhere. They were running after a young boy near the age of 6. He wore a worn out orange shirt with many rips and shorts that were an ugly puce green color. His once bright blonde hair, now matted with mud, sweat, and blood swept up with the wind as he tried to run faster. This boy is Naruto Uzumaki of the Kyubi no Kitsune. His sapphire blue eyes widened as he nearly tripped over a rock. Why are they calling me a monster? A demon. What did I ever do to them? I don't understand. He ran into an empty alleyway looking for a place to hide. He turned in a full circle and gulped when he realized that he was in a dead end. He stepped backwards and smiled shakily. Oh no I'm really sorry for whatever I did, so I'll be going. The drunken villager kicked him in the stomach. Hard. Naruto was lifted off the ground and slammed into the wall. He threw up the remains of his dinner. Naruto groaned and looked up fearfully at the villager in front of him. What did I do? I don't get it. What did you do? What the hell did you do? You helling killed my beloved wife and helling demon. I'll helling kill you. The other villager held up the broken bottle and slammed it against Naruto's head. Die you helling demon. Naruto's eyes rolled behind his head and his body became still. The two villagers began to kick Naruto's still body. I dot a kick. Helling demon dot another kick. Helling go to hell dot another kick. And Helling stay there dot another kick. In Naruto's mind, Naruto had a bewildered look on his face as he turned around. He started to walk at a fast pace towards what he hoped was the exit. Where am I? Did the villagers dump me in a sewer or something? He continued to walk until he came to a large cage with the word seal on it. Why is there a cage in the sewer? Is there something in there that people wanted to hide? Naruto's curiosity got the better of him as he walked closer to the cage. A pair of bright red eyes stared at him as Naruto reached out to touch the ornate bars of the cage. Did a voice grumbled. Who are you Naruto took a step back. I am the Kaiubi no Kitsune. I I am possible the fourth killed you. Bullish dot it's impossible to kill a demon. Did they really think that sealing me would stop me? It only prolongs their death. Sealed. What do you mean? I mean what I mean. I am sealed in a dot in other words, you. Nani me? Nani, what? Ninja human. Okay so how was it? Was it good? Bad? Tell me in your reviews. I'll read all of them. Also no flames unless it's constructive criticism. Yes kit, I am sealed in you. So the villagers were right I am a monster. You are not a monster, the only monster there is, is that snake. What does a snake have to do with this? That snake is the one who killed my mate in kits. I only saw his headband so I naturally attacked Kanoha believing they were also responsible for my family's death. I'll help you kill the snake if you can get me out of this village. You want to leave this village. You always go around telling everyone that you'll be Hokage someday, but that dream is unattainable if you're not part of Kanoha. I don't care about being Hokage if the Hokage can't do anything but watch people suffer for something they are not responsible for. Very well kid, I'll help you, I'll also train you seeing you can't kill that snake if you aren't a ninja. Arigatou Kai Ubi. Thank me later, we have to get you out of this situation first. Situation. Those two villagers are still beating you up, even though you're obviously unconscious. Take my chakra and destroy them. The cage the Kaiubi was in started to leak red chakra. Naruto was knocked back into consciousness after being enveloped by the demonic chakra. The two villagers high-fived and prepared to leave after a night of demon hunting. Their eyes widened as the limp body in front of them started to move. Naruto unsteadily stood up and growled. Red chakra began to spill from his body. Naruto gazed at the villagers with a mad look on his face. His eyes were red, his teeth turned into sharp fangs, and claws began to form on his hands. The villagers tried to run but were quickly overwhelmed by the Kyubified Naruto. Let us. The villagers' words were cut short as Naruto raised his newly formed claws. A loud screeching noise was heard as he raked his claws on the wall. As Naruto moved his claws and stretched, the villagers could see that there were five deep scratches on the wall where he dug them. Naruto began to smile, but it wasn't his usual sunny smile. It was a sadistic and bloodthirsty one. The killing intent in the area multiplied tenfold as Naruto started to walk forward. I'll destroy you. You two will be my first victims. Naruto dashed forward with his claws outstretched. The villagers stepped back and started to whimper. Dark wet spots appeared on their pants as they tried to run away. Naruto licked his lips. He was enjoying this fight. It made him feel happy no, alive. Help. The demon is attacking us, somebody, help one villager shouted. Naruto growled as he ripped out the throat of the other villager. He purred in pleasure as he licked the blood off his claws. As he was doing this, a few Anbu appeared on the rooftops. Apparently they felt the massive chakra spike a few minutes ago. The Anbu-san, he helped me. The demon is is. Naruto began to walk towards the villager, leaving the dead one behind him. 
You're beginning to annoy me why don't you shut up for a change. He raised his claw and dashed forward. Anbu jumped down from the roof and started to throw shuriken and kunai at Naruto. Naruto effortlessly dodged the projectiles and swung his claws. One Anbu grabbed the villager and hurried away. You stupid Anbu, you helped my prey escape you know, I'm still hungry, I guess you guys will have to do it. Naruto leapt forward with his fangs bared menacingly. Die. Cliffy. Aren't I mean. Just kidding. Naruto jumped forward and lashed out with his claws. Anbu jumped out of the way and flashed his hands through a bunch of hand signs. Naruto looked at Anbu and licked his lips. You will be fun to kill I can't wait to taste your blood. Anbu held his hand to his mouth, Katen, Gakaku no Jutsu. A huge fireball seemingly erupted from the dog-faced mask and dove straight at Naruto. Naruto smirked and jumped out of the way, but not before he struck him in the side. He landed heavily on the floor and coughed up some blood. He frowned and winced while pulling out. Dot. It was covered with a sickly purple liquid. Naruto grabbed his side and growled. Poison you'll pay for that, Anbu team. Like you could do anything, that poison we used is a special poison that paralyzes the body a few minutes after use. Puzo? No, I can't lose, I must leave this place. Naruto feebly tried to get up on his feet and groaned as he felt the effects of the poison creep slowly but surely in his blood. He winced as a kunai whistled through the air and hit him in his arm. He collapsed and growled slowly. Why? I just wanted to leave this place that isn't much to ask, is it? Naruto's eyes turned back to their original cerulean blue. He blacked out a few seconds later. The Sandame Hokage ran over to the Anbu with concern crossing his elderly face. Bakashi. Shows Naruto. He's fine, Hokage-sama I just knocked him out with some paralyzing agent. This isn't good, Kakashi. The council will surely do something drastic because of these events. Sandane picked up Naruto carefully and started to walk away. He caressed Naruto's face and ruffled his hair. Minato I feel so useless, I can't even protect your son properly. You must be turning in your grave now. Are you feeling betrayed, Minato? That the villagers aren't respecting your last wish. In the council room, the council room was abuzz with noise. The civilian council was very angry over the death of the villager that Naruto had killed. Bill the demon one council member shouted, slamming his fist on a nearby table. It attacked the villagers another council member shouted, waving her arms. Be quiet the sandane glared at the room. He was literally oozing killer intent off his body. One elderly council member gave a strangle choke and fainted. Anzo slowly walked into the room. He glared at the sandane. If it wasn't for you Suratobi, the demon would be my weapon. Anyways, we, the Shinobi Council, decided that the demon is to be exiled from Konoha, forever. Anzo, you can't do that. It wasn't Naruto's fault. Not the demon's fault. So you're telling me that a respected civilian just decided to rip his own throat out tonight, when the demon just happened to be walking down the street. Just then, an Anbu ran to the Sandame and whispered something in his ear. Sandame nodded and hurried out of the room. The Anbu took off after the Sandame and sighed. Okajama, I've heard rumors about this, and I want to verify my information. Is it true? Naruto is exiled from Konoha. Yes, can't you? I can't change what the council thinks, Kakashi. They entered a small room. Naruto was lying down on a bed staring at the ceiling. Tears went down his face as he sobbed quietly. Sandame stood next to the bed and gently touched Naruto's arm. Naruto are you alright? Does it look like I'm alright, Hokijiji? I just got beaten up by two drunks and found out that the Kaiubi was sealed in my stomach. The Sandane gasped and stared at Naruto. Oh no Naruto, what did Kaiubi tell you? Many things including why he attacked Konoha. Why did Kaiubi attack Konoha? The Konoha shinobi killed his kits namely a snake. Orochimaru? Is that his name? Sandane nodded dumbly as Naruto processed this bit of information in his mind. I see Hokage Jiji, do you think you can get me out of Konoha? I need to kill Orochimaru for Kaiubi. Naruto we need to see the council. Come with me. Naruto had a questioning face on, but followed Yandame and Kakashi out of the room anyway. They walked into the council room. The council was arguing with Danzo about something. The room became silent as they noticed Naruto. Hamura stood up and cleared her throat. Yuzumaki Naruto, do you know why we, the council, called you here today? Nope. Well we the council of Konoha have hereby announced you exiled for Konoha, forever. We will give you 12 hours to pack up your things and leave Konoha. Exiled. I, Yuzumaki Naruto, am exiled just because I hold the freaking Kaiubi in my gut. If I weren't here, the village would have been destroyed years ago. You know about Kaiubi? Well let me tell you something, you are Kaiubi. Therefore, you are deemed a threat to Konoha. Leave. Very well, I will leave. But remember this, Konoha is my enemy now, and I will take every measure to destroy it. Naruto jumped out of the window and left, leaving the council speechless. Hayden, Kakaku no Jutsu fire style, grand fireball technique, in the council room, the Sandame silently fumed at the council. Hayuga Hiyashi turned towards him and began to speak, but was cut off by a civilian council member. 
Now that the demon is exiled from Kanoha, I believe that we should notify the rest of the village of this news. The rest of the civilian council mumbled in agreement and left the room leaving the shinobi council behind. Ichiha Fugaku and Inuzuka Tsum were discussing how wonderful it was to be finally rid of the Kaiubi incarnate. Hayuga Hiyashi was in a deep discussion with Akamichi Chauza, Yamanaka Inoichi, and Nara Shikaku. Aburam Shibi and Karama Ankai were sitting stokely together. The Sandame headed out the door heaving a sigh. Hamura frowned and pursed her lips. Kaharu, on the other hand, sternly spoke to Sandame. Tsuritobi, may I ask where are you going? You still have to tell the rest of the village that the demon scum is exiled. For your information, I am going to go talk with Naruto about a very important matter that concerns none of you. An important matter? There is no important matter about him except that he's Kaiubi. And I'm not surprised that Minato and Kashina didn't entrust their secrets to you. What secret? They're both dead. Kashina was pregnant and she left behind her, the Namika's clan heir. All the clan heads turned their attention to the Sandame, as he revealed the identity of the Namika's clan heir. Namika's Yuzumaki Naruto. In the streets of Konoha. Naruto jumped across the roofs of Konoha, feeling the caress of the wind on his face. He silently cursed as he misstepped and landed in front of a pink-haired lady and a pink-haired child. The woman glared at him and dragged her child away to a nearby house. Naruto shrugged and continued on his way to his apartment. As he turned the corner he picked up on the bitter scent of smoke. He ran the rest of the way hoping that his orange jumpsuits were okay. Naruto slightly growled as his eyes took in the side of the burning apartment building. He could only stare as the flames swallowed up the side of his apartment building. He hung his head down and headed to Kanoha Gate. A nearby villager threw a rock which struck Naruto in the side. After a few minutes, a mob was chasing Naruto through the streets. Naruto hissed as the contents of a beer bottle was spilled over him. His eyes started to turn into a light shade of purple. One villager threw a rusty knife and shouted, Look. The demon is showing his true form. The knife flew true to its mark and struck Naruto in the throat. Naruto pulled the knife out and tried to stem the blood. While he was doing this, the villagers started to throw stones at Naruto's body. Naruto began to shed tears. I can't die now. I have to help kill Orochimaru for Kaiubi. I promised him I would kill the snake. I can't go back on my promise I must live. Naruto started to leap purple chakra. The chakra flowed around him and started to form into a tail. Naruto's eyes however, didn't stay a purple color. They turned silver with a black crescent moon in the middle. Naruto roared and sent a wave of potent chakra toward the nearby houses. The houses immediately caved in and exploded into many wooden pieces. Sandane hurried towards Naruto with a worried look on his face. Naruto. What are you doing? Naruto turned towards the Sandane with a serious look on his feral face. I was going to leave the village, but these villages are blocking my way. If you don't want to get hurt, I suggest you leave, Hokage-sama. Naruto don't leave, Kanoha needs you. Kanoha needs me. Yay, Kanoha needs me. Kanoha needs me to be their living punching bag. I cannot stay here, Hokage-sama. As of now, I don't even know why I wanted to be in this useless village. Hokage is just a title with no meaning behind it. Naruto turned towards the Kanoha gate once again and dashed into the forest, leaving a speechless Sandame and celebrating with the villagers. After a few minutes the Sandame lowered his head. Minato, I failed you your son has left Kanoha, and it is all my fault. I couldn't protect him from either the villagers or the council. I'm a failure as a Hokage. Why couldn't it be me to do the Shiki Fujin? If I did, you would be alive and taking care of your son. Minato what would you do in my place? In the forest, Naruto jumped from tree to tree with his purple tail flowing behind him. He jumped into a clearing and snarled, scaring away the wildlife. He stopped at a nearby stream and quenched his thirst. Leaning back on a tree trunk he gazed at the stars and fell asleep. In Mindscape, Naruto looked around and sighed. He ran to the front of the cage and mumbled something about lazy nine-tailed foxes. Boy, Kaiubi. What am I doing here? Hit, I called you here since I have something I must tell you. What is it? You noticed that your chakra was purple instead of red when you were fighting, right? Yay, is that bad? No kid, it's not necessarily bad. That purple chakra was a hybrid chakra, created from your human chakra and my demonic chakra. It also seems to have activated a dormant of yours. But what's that? I was getting to that anyways, it is a very special ability that you inherit from one of your parents. You in particular are very rare. I haven't seen it in a few hundred years. It's called Riemigen. It is very powerful and allows you to combine different types of chakra, so you come up with a new one. It also allows you to have the five normal chakra affinities, fire, water, wind, earth, and lighting. So if the Riemigen allows me to combine different chakra, I can make completely new chakras right, yes. So if you combine water and wind, you get ice. Water and earth gives you wood. Be a creative kit. Who knows, you might create some new type of chakra. There will be more information on the new purple chakra and the Riemigen in later chapters. 
I just made the name Ryan again on the spot. It means Twilight Eye. But what's that? I was getting to that anyways, as a very special ability that you inherit from one of your parents. You in particular are very rare. I haven't seen it in a few hundred years. It's called Ryamigan. It is very powerful and allows you to combine different types of chakra, so you come up with a new one. It also allows you to have the five normal chakra affinities, fire, water, wind, earth, and lighting. So if the Ryamigan allows me to combine different chakra, I can make completely new chakras right. Yes. So if you combine water and wind, you get ice. Water and earth gives you wood. Be a creative kid. Who knows, you might create some new type of chakra. Thing 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 thing. And now to the story. Thing 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 thing. That's all I'm going to tell you about the Ryamigan for now. We are going to discuss your training next. Training. Yay. Teach me how to do some cool ninja stuff. Please Kaiubi. When I am teaching you kid, you will address me as Kaiubi sensei. Hi, Kaiubi sensei. Very well. Before I teach you as you call it cool ninja stuff, you must increase your stamina and speed. But we can start that when you wake up. Anyway, I want you to rip a corner off the seal of my cage. Why? Then we can speak to one another without you having to go into a meditating state. Your senses will also improve drastically. You also will gain some accessories. Accessories? What do you mean? Maybe a tail or something. I'm Kaiubi sensei, I'll rip a corner of that seal. But you owe me, I don't think a tail will be very beneficial. Naruto stood on his toes and slowly ripped a corner of the seal. The seal glowed purple and faded away. Red chakra flooded out of the cage and surrounded Naruto. Naruto screamed as the chakra burned him. Naruto collapsed and breathed heavily as the red chakra disappeared. Two strong arms shook Naruto lightly. Naruto opened his eyes and looked up in confusion. A man was sitting in front of him. He had long red hair and red eyes with slits. He was wearing a black kimono with a crimson obi. The kimono was decorated with a large red fox. The kanji for nine was on the back of the kimono. Two fox ears decorated the head of the man, while nine long red tails flowed serenely behind him. Who are you? Did you forget me already, Kit? Kaiubi sensei? That's right. What happened to you? When you ripped the corner of the seal, it allowed me to have a sort of freedom in your mind. So I decided to take a more presentable form. Anyway Kit, you should deactivate the tree imagine before you run out of chakra. How do I do that? Just cut the supply of chakra from your eyes. How do you do that? How to put this in simple words ok kid, copy the position my hand is in right, now dot Kaiubi said while holding his hands in a ram quickly complied and did a clumsy ram seal with his hands. Kaiubi quickly fixed the position of Naruto's hands and ruffled his hair. Now try to focus your spiritual and physical energy to every part of your body. Kaiubi's eyes slightly widened as a large sphere of swirling purple chakra enveloped Naruto. Very good. Do you feel like there is chakra near your eyes Naruto nodded. Try to stop the flow of chakra there. Naruto focused, and after a few minutes he opened his eyes. His eyes were the normal sapphire blue instead of the silver and black of the Ryamigan. Did I do it right, Kaiubi sensei Yes kid, you did a very good job for a person of your age. Now I want you to look at yourself and tell me what you think. Naruto looked at himself and gasped as he noticed the color and length of his hair. His hair reached down to his waist and was a dark golden color with reddish black tips. A pair of sharp canines jutted from his mouth. He grinned but was distracted by a long black and red tail swinging lazily behind him. I have a tail. I told you that you might get a tail kit. What are you doing? Naruto looked up with a sheepish look on his face. He was trying to stuff his tail into his jumpsuit. Ah no Kaiubi sensei you know that I can't exactly walk in the streets with a tail swinging behind me. Why can't you? It's not normal, Kaiubi sensei. Normal people don't go around with tails swinging behind them. Stop your complaining, kit. If the tail is such a problem, just retract it. Retract it? How is that possible? Well as you know, I am a 10,000 year old demon fox. Some time in life, I must journey to the world of humans. Whenever I am there in the human world, I must retract my tails so people don't go up to me, pet my tails, and go kawe. I didn't need to know that. So how do you retract a tail? Thus think about retracting your tail, it shouldn't be that hard. The tail comes out as a tattoo on your dominant hand. Naruto closed his eyes and focused on his chakra. His tail disappeared and a black tattoo appeared on his arm. Cool now that I don't have a tail swinging behind me, how about you start my training now Kaiubi sensei. Very well kid Kaiubi said while tossing a white card over to Naruto, just imbue some of your chakra into the chakra card. The paper will crumple if you have a lightning nature, split in half if wind, burn up if fire, fall apart if earth, and become wet if water. Naruto holds the card and focuses for a minute. The card immediately split in half, crumpled, caught on fire, got wet, and turned to rubble. Well I should have known you would have control of the five elements because of the Riyami. Ah no Kaiubi sensei, the chakra card, it's glowing black. Well I didn't expect that to occur. Expect what? 
Congratulations kid, looks like you also have an amount of control over the darkness element. That's quite rare, you know. Cool, darkness element. The possibilities are endless so what are you going to teach me first? We're going to start off with a nice and long training regiment let's see. I will be hands Naruto a sheet of paper with the training regiment Naruto is supposed to follow. Naruto reads it with Kaiubi smiling behind him. Naruto drops the paper and faints. Kaiubi stared at this with wide eyes. What happened? Was it the training regiment? I didn't make it too hard. Kaiubi picks up the training regiment and reads it. Training regiment, am, 6 o'clock wake up and run around the lake 20 times, 6.20 eat healthy breakfast, no ramen, 6.40 do 45 push-ups, 40 sit-ups, and 50 crunches, numbers are subject to change, 7 o'clock to jutsu lessons, 8 o'clock run around lake 30 times, 8.30 meditating, no dozing off, or else, 9 o'clock practice chakra control, 10 o'clock, weapon practice, 11 o'clock, lunch, Raymond isn't healthy, 11.20 run around the lake 15 times, 11.40, rest, p.m., 12 o'clock, Jinjutsu practice, 1 o'clock train with Riem again, 2 o'clock, meditating, 2.30 sparring, with me, 3 o'clock through Ninjutsu practice, 4 o'clock, rest, 4.20 nature manipulation practice, 5.20 Ninjutsu practice, 7 o'clock run 20 laps around the lake, 7.25, meditating, 8 o'clock dinner, I forbid Raymond, 8.30 sleep, I don't see anything wrong with my training regiment, thing 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 thing, time skip of 6 months, somewhere near but not too near Kanoha, Naruto smiled contentedly as he ran around the lake, this is life a friend who actually cares about me, no dumb Kanoha villagers yelling at me and to top it off, Kaiubi sensei says that we'll be taking a trip to another hidden village soon, I can't wait, Kaiubi sat under the shade of a tree holding a wrapped parcel, he faintly smiled, I'm so proud of you kid in a few months you managed to do so much. You even managed to release me from the seal. You'll become the world's strongest ninja, no doubt about that. The Kaiubi shouted, come here for a moment. What is Kaiubi sensei Naruto asked as he walked over. It's your birthday today isn't it? Yay, it is. Naruto answered with a sad look on his face. Why are you sad, kid? It's your birthday, you're supposed to be happy. It's nothing it's just that the Kanoha villagers used to beat me up, especially bad on my birthday. I would be beaten up within an inch of my life. Well I'm here, kid, the villagers will never hurt you Kaiubi growled, I promise you that. And a kid soon never goes back on a promise. Arigatou, Kaiubi sensei You don't know how much your words mean to me. Anyways, happy birthday, kid. Since it is your birthday today, I might as well give you your presents now. Presents? Yes kid, Kaiubi handed a beaming Naruto the wrapped parcel in his hands. Naruto ripped open the paper and held up two gleaming katana. Naruto shifted a blue helted katana out of its crimson scabbard. A gleaming onyx blade stared back at him. The blade seemed to absorb the light and everything with it. Naruto widened his eyes as he drew out the second katana. This katana had a black hilt and silver scabbard. But what was strange about the katana was that the blade was a pearly white color. Sugoi Kaiubi sensei, I can't thank you enough for this. What are they called? The white katana is made from one of my fangs. It secretes a sort of poison that can destroy a person's chakra circulatory system. It can also cut through anything. It is known as Hakutsu. The black katana is Kurikan. I forged it myself in hope that it will help improve your control over the darkness element. Kaiubi had a wry smile on his face. I mean, we don't want that incident to happen again do we? Flashback. Okay kid, let's try that again. Remember, try to be the darkness. Try to blend in. Be invisible to the naked eye. Hi, Kaiubi sensei Naruto closed his eyes and focused. He started to fade away slowly. Kaiubi nodded, happy his kid finally was finally getting the basics of this exercise. Very good kid, very well do. Kaiubi stopped as an impenetrable darkness fell upon the clearing they were in. Kid what did you do? Kaiubi sensei I have no idea. I can't see anything. How does this darkness go away? Try dispelling it like this dot. Hi. Kaiubi sensei, nothing happened. Try using fire to light it up. Oh why didn't I think of that? Katen. Naruto's face was suddenly visible as he held a small red fireball. Kaiubi sensei. I can see, but the darkness is still there. Hit try to see if you can get rid of the darkness. What do you mean? How do you dismiss your little fireball? I just tell it to go, like this dot Naruto waved his hand and the fireball in his hand promptly disappeared. So, do that with the darkness. Don't you think I tried that already? Kami-sama, we're going to be stuck in this darkness, forever Naruto shouted with panic in his voice. It soon heightened, Tayu no Hikari. Ayubi raises his hands to his eyes as a bright glaring light chases the darkness away. Naruto looked around and started to jump up and down. Wow, Kaiubi sensei That was amazing. Can you teach me how to do that? Hmm. Can you? That last time I checked, you didn't have the light element, so it will be impossible for you to learn light dot. 
Oh yeah I forgot about that. Flashback ends. Naruto's face grew increasingly red as Kai Ubi laughed at the memory. Sorry kid that memory was just so funny, I had to laugh. Whatever, Kai Ubi sensei. Thank you so much for Hakutsu and Kurikan. As a matter of fact, I'm going to train with Kurikan right now. My darkness element is still very bad for me to control. Hit, we don't have time for you to train today. We're heading over to Kumagakur as soon as we gather some traveling supplies. Kumagakur? Yes. We're going to Kumo. This is awesome. Yes, we're going to Kumo, but we have to gather supplies first. But the closest place for supplies is Konoha I understand if you want to wait for me here while I get the supplies. I'm coming with you. I'll just hinge myself so no one will recognize me. If you say so Kit. Naruto quickly did the hand signs for Henge and transformed into a young boy with shoulder length light brown hair and pale red eyes. Kai Ubi shook his head and chuckled as he hanged as well. When the smoke cleared, a man with long red hair and a ponytail stood there with his sapphire eyes flashing. Okay Kit, in Konoha we have to hide chakra reserves so no Anbu will pick up on us. We will also need code names to call each other by. I will be Akuma Shinji, well you will be my son, Akuma Samui. Come on, let's go and get the supplies we need in Kanoha. I want to head to Kumo before the sun sets. Me too Naruto slings Hakutsum on his back and Kurikan on his waist and begins a tree jump with Kai Ubi behind him, what sort of supplies do we need anyway? Well we need to restock on kunai, shuriken, exploding notes and some new clothes for you. Naruto and Kai Ubi jumped through the trees until they were inside of the Kanoha gates. They jumped down from the trees and landed on the ground. Remember kid, I'm your father, and your name is Akuma Samui. I won't forget Otu-san. The Kanoha guard stopped Kai Ubi asking who he was. I am Akuma Shinji. I am a wandering merchant hoping to find a place to settle down so I can raise my son, Samui. Oh, okay the guard smiled, welcome to Kanoha. Enjoy your stay. Kai Ubi and Naruto walk through the streets looking at all the shops. Samui, I'm going to go and buy the supplies for our trip as well as your new clothes. I'll meet you at the Kanoha gate in two hours or so. Go play in the park or something. Kai Ubi walked away whistling leaving Naruto in his wake. Naruto sighed and walked towards the Hokage Tower. Ah, I have nothing to do for two whole hours. I can't go massacring people, people will panic and the Anbu might notice. I might as well walk through the streets and hope something interesting happens. Naruto yawned as he walked past the library for the tenth time. I walked past this library ten times already and only half an hour passed. This is so boring. I might as well go to the park like Kai Ubi sensei suggested. Naruto walked into the park as he noticed many children playing with each other. Their parents were sitting together discussing something. Naruto grew curious and walked closer so he could hear what they were talking about. Did you hear? Yeah. The Hokage sent a ninja out to capture the demon. It turns out that the demon's father is the Yandame Hokage. The demon is the Namaka's clan heir? Yup. He's also the Yuzumaki clan heir. Oh my. Naruto's eyes widened and he slowly stepped back from the adults. Yandame? My father. Heir of the Namakas and Yuzumaki clans. Why didn't they tell me? It was my birthright Kai Ubi sensei will know, I'll ask him later. Hey. What are you doing? Naruto looked up to see a smiling adult. Just picking a flower Naruto hurriedly picked a pale blue flower and held it to his nose, it smells so nice. That flower you picked is a morning, Glory the adult plucked the flower out of Naruto's hand and slipped it in her hair. By the way, I'm Ichiha Mikoto. Nice to meet you, Ichiha-san. I'm Akuma Samui. Do you want to meet my children? They're about your age. Sure, I would love to. It is not like I have anything better to do. Naruto followed the Ichiha where a bunch of children were playing. A boy with brown hair and red marks under his eyes was chasing a young girl with indigo hair and pupil-less eyes. Another boy was lying down on a bench gazing at the clouds while the boy next to him was eating a bag of chips. Another boy was looking at bugs. The girl with platinum blonde hair and bright blue eyes was staring at a boy with black blue hair and onyx eyes together with a girl that had bright pink hair and emerald eyes. All of the children looked over at Naruto and Makoto as they entered the clearing. Come on Samui. Go introduce yourself to them. Naruto nodded and walked forward towards the children. Hi, I'm Akuma Samui. Nice to meet you nice. This is boring. The boy with red marks under his eyes ran towards Naruto with a goofy smile on his face. Two of the girls ran forward with bright smiles while the last one poked her fingers together and walked slowly. The boy who was looking at the clouds walked towards Naruto with the boy eating chips. The boy looking at bugs walked over stoically. The boy with onyx eyes ran over last. Hi, I'm Inuzuka Kiba. I'm Yamanaka Ino. Haruno Sakura. I'm Hayuga Hinata. Nara Shikamaru. Akamichi Chaoji. Aburam Shino. Ichiha Sasuke. You kids have fun Makoto left with a wave and a smile. Are your eyes really that color, Samui? Naruto looked over to the speaker. Kiba was staring intently at his eyes which seemed to be the center of attraction as of right now. 
Yes, Naruto sighed. My eyes have always been this color. Oi, Samui. Time to go. Everyone looked over at the man who was shouting at Naruto. Otu-san Naruto ran over to Kaiubi and waved back at the children in the clearing, Goman, but I have to leave now. Maybe I'll see you sometimes. I hope I never see them again. Naruto and Kaiubi left the park and headed to Kanoha Gate. So Samui, how was your day? It was retarded. I spent half an hour walking past the library. Then I went to the park and was dragged into playing with other children. That isn't too bad. I spent my two hours being googled by half the female populace. Naruto and Kaiubi sigh and arrive at the gate. They looked back at Kanoha with different expressions. Kaiubi had a look of boredom on his face, while Naruto's face was disgusted. They quickly undid the hinge and jumped into the trees. Next stop, Kumo. Amak, um, Kaiubi sensei just why are we reviewing the henge again? I want to make sure you perfected it. Yay whatever dot this is the perfect chance to test out my new no henge. When the cloud of smoke dispersed a teenager with golden hair and deep cerulean eyes stared at Kaiubi and threw him a hug. Kaiubi openly drooled and had a massive nosebleed. Kaiubi sensei you idiot. I can explain myself Kaiubi stepped back and dropped a certain orange book on the ground, oops, Iro Kitsune, Kitsune Haiten, Taiyu no Hikari Kitsune Light Style, Light of the Sun, Henge Transform, Warwick no Jutsu Jutsu, Naruto and Kaiubi stood on top of a grassy hill overlooking a large village. Naruto looked over at Kaiubi with a slight smile on his face. So this is Kumo, Kaiubi Sensei, correct? You never told me, why are we even in Kumo? It's not like I mind, but I'd still like to know. We're here because I heard rumors in this area. Inchuriki. Like how I was before I released you. Yes I'm going to go and check out those rumors. Remember to use your henge if you are going to go explore Kumo, Kit. Why? This is in Kanoha. They don't know about me. I wouldn't bet money on that. That council in Kanoha probably has you listed as a high rank Kanoha missing min or something. Better safe than sorry. Somewhere in Kanoha. Anzo sat in a chair slowly sipping a cup of coffee. Yes dot then I shall be Hokage. First thing I'll at you. Anzo dropped his coffee, spilling it all over himself. He picked up a nearby tissue and rubbed his sore nose. Someone must be talking about me. Back in Kumo, Naruto walked down the streets in his hinge and kept his eyes peeled for activity. He sighed as his stomach growled loudly. He quickly bought a stick of dango and took a large bite out of it. He noticed a young girl staring at the dango in his hand. Her dirty blonde hair blew in the wind as her jade eyes met Naruto's pale red eyes. And remember, Naruto is in a hinge. More specifically Akuma Samui. The dango shop owner ran out of her shop swinging a ladle. You demon. Stay away from the boy. She ran towards the blonde girl screaming profanities and smacked her on the face. The girl was slammed into the wall. Her jade eyes were widened and full of fear. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as a mob quickly formed and started to attack the girl. Demon. You mauled an innocent boy. Die. Naruto's eyes narrowed as those words brought back unwanted memories. He walked forward trying to act like the innocent boy the civilian seemed to think he was. Ana why are you attacking her? She didn't do anything. Naruto quickly contacted Kaiubi with their mental connection. Kaiubi sensei. You better come here quickly. I think I found them. A mob is beating up on her, and I don't think I can stall them for any longer. I'm coming as fast as I can, Kit. Stall them for as long as you can. One of the civilians waved a long fireplace poker and dug it in the girl's cheek. This here is a demon. She deserves to die. He lifted the poker and quickly brought it down towards the girl's head. In a red flash Kaiubi appeared and caught the poker. He wrestled it from the man and stabbed him in the throat. Kaiubi looked on unfazed as the man slowly fell to the ground with blood dripping from the wound. The crowd slowly backed away, but a man stepped aside from the crowd and glared at Kaiubi. The man had dark brown eyes and long silver hair. A Kumo headband was tied around his neck. You are under arrest for attacking a citizen of Kumagakur. Please come with me quietly or I'll be forced to restrain you. Like damn I'll follow you. That citizen was provoking a young girl. The girl? All I see is trash that hasn't been thrown away properly. Trash. Is that what you call innocent little girls that haven't done anything to you? Innocent. A demon is never innocent. That thing is only still here because Rakage Sama has a good heart. Screw that. Screw your Rakage too. This girl is coming with me and my son. And we are never coming back. I'm afraid you can't do that. That demon is Rakage Sama's property. If you try to take it with you, I will have to end your life. Bring it on. This girl is coming with me. Like it or not. I am Jinota Natter. Kumo's strongest dot you will perish by my hands. Let's see you try. Samu take the girl and go. I will get rid of this man. Naruto's gaze hardened as he nodded, grabbing the girl's hand. The girl gasped as Naruto ran past the villagers and Kaiubi. Natter turned to stop Naruto, but was met by a long red katana which was held by Kaiubi. I am your opponent, Jinota-san. But Naruto. Naruto ran, pulling the girl's arm hoping to get out of Kumo before Shinobi decided to track them. 
he stopped to rest in an alley and undid his hinge. The girl pulled her arm back with a very angry and scared look on her face. Who do you think you are? I don't need your help. I could have protected myself from those people. You? Protect yourself. That man was about to kill you. You should be happy that my O2 cent saved your ungrateful face. Then you don't know anything. Didn't you hear the villagers? I'm a demon. And you believe them when they say you're a demon. You don't look anything like one. I can do things. Things normal people can't do. If that doesn't mark me as a demon, I don't know what does. Lots of people do things. Like Shinobi. If your villagers started calling Kumo Shinobi, demon, let's just say the Kumo would be in a war right now. But, my O2 Sen is a ninja. Is he a demon? No, but, I am a ninja. Do I look like a demon? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you or your O2 Sen. That's alright. Now let's start this conversation again. What's your name? I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. A.N. Naruto is being truthful with Yujito, since he is sure that she is what Kaiubi was looking for. Also, he refers to himself as Yuzumaki because he is still not sure of his lineage. I'm Nai Yujito. Nice to meet you. Hey Yujito, have you ever felt like you had something inside you? A part of yourself that comes out when you're angry or something. Yes I sometimes feel like I have something in me. When I get angry it feels like the other part of me wants me to take revenge. I see you may not want to know this, but I think you deserve to know. You are what humans call a dot. But what's that? A human sacrifice. When they attack they are practically unstoppable. The only way to stop them is to seal them into a baby. I'm guessing that someone attacked Kumo and someone sealed it into you. Naruto slowly walked the rest of the distance over to Yujito. He held out his hand asking a question with his eyes. Yujito smiled and accepted the proffered hand. Naruto started to walk away from the alley with Yujito. He came face to face with a man. The man had shoulder-length brown hair and hazel eyes. He had a Kumo headband tied on his left arm. He was sadistically smiling and twirling a kunai. Well well well. What do we have here? A demon and her little friend. Naruto growled at the man and walked in front of Yujito protectively. Who are you Naruto snarled at the man. Who am I? I am your executioner, Ritaka Shinyu. Naruto grabbed Yujito's hand and pulled her close to him. Yujito, stay out of my way. This Shinyu person is dangerous. I can't fight and protect you at the same time. Naruto if you fight, I'll fight as well. After all, what are friends for? But Yujito, you might get hurt. And O2 Sen will never let me live it down if I draw Lady in danger. It's alright. I can fight too. Yujito thank you. Naruto quickly slipped into a Tajutsu stance and activated his Riemigen. Yujito lowered herself on all fours and hissed. Her fingernails lengthened and her eyes turned to an amber color. A long orange tail swung behind her. Naruto looked at her with an interested look on his face. Yujito is already under her Biju's influence. Slanted eyes, claws, and a tail too and there's a shadow of a big two-tailed cat above her. Shin Yu threw his kunai down on the ground and unsheathed a short tanto from his waist. Naruto stiffened in his pose and watched Shin Yu closely. Shin Yu smirked and held the tanto out. When I kill the demon, I'll be known as a hero in Kumo. Just killing your little friend is just an early birthday present for me. Yujito hissed and ran forward with her claws outstretched. Naruto paused for a moment before jumping up and unsheathing Kurikin. Kurikin met Shinryu's Tanto, and both fought for dominance over the other. Naruto frowned and jumped backwards landing on his feet. Yujito's small form was covered with blood. She was maniacally swiping at Shinryu and missing him every time. This isn't good. Yujito can't fight too well and is losing too much blood. It'll be a matter of time until Shinryu hits Yujito with a fatal blow. He has more experience than me and most likely he's level or higher. I have to somehow get away before either of us gets too hurt. Shinryu smirked as he kneed Yujito in the stomach. Yujito skidded back on the ground and yowled as she coughed up blood. Naruto looked worriedly at her and whispered to Katen. A small fireball appeared in his hand. He threw it at Shinryu and grabbed Yujito. He ran out of the alley with Yujito next to him and Shinryu behind him, with Kaiubi. Kaiubi watched the retreating backs of Naruto, and the Dadi held out his katana in a defensive pose. I don't know much about this Natter person, so my best bet would be to stay on the defensive until I can gauge his abilities. Kid stay safe. You do know that you are meddling in Reikijama's business. If you give up now and hand over the demon to me, I'll allow you to live. You're all talk, no action. Kaiubi ran forward raising his katana intending to end this fight quickly. Natter quickly blocked the oncoming katana with a kunai. Natter pushed the katana away, but still got nicked on the cheek by the katana. He quickly went through a series of hand signs while shouting Raiden, Inazuma to Taku. Natter rapidly put his arms in a downward cross. Kaiubi jumped back and to his surprise a large lightning bolt crashed where he was just seconds ago. Kaiubi narrowed his eyes looking at the large hole in front of him. I cannot play with this person. He is a seasoned shinobi, and his ninjutsu ability is exceptional for a human. 
I might have to get Siri soon. Ayubi smirked as he went through his own series of hand signs at the same time as he whispered Kitsune Katen Futen, Kajimasu Arashi. He raised his hands to the sky and brought them forcibly down. A burning mass of wind blew through the street leaving nothing. Kaiubi sighed and ran towards where he felt Naruto's chakra signature. I had hoped to end it without making too much of a mess, but that matter was a dangerous factor. Now I must find it before the rakage notices a missing street. Raiden, Inazuma Tataku lightning style, lightning strike, Itsune Katen Fuiten, Kajimasu Arashi Kitsune fire wind style, burning storm. Naruto tightly held Yujito's hand and ran out of Kumagakur. He quickly looked back and continued to run. Naruto. Where are we going? We're supposed to fight. We can't. It's too dangerous for us and you're losing a lot of blood already. I can't risk more than it is necessary. Yujito quietly snarled and wished her tail around. The shadow of the cat above yowled. Then what are we going to do here? Stay here till my O2 san comes. He's coming here as fast as he can. But Shinryu will be here faster. Naruto growled as Yujito talked. Naruto quickly jumped away with Yujito in his arms as Shinryu appeared and slashed the space where he was a minute ago. Yujito tried to struggle out of Naruto's grasp but failed. This is really bad. I can't beat him, and Yujito can't fight him on her own what am I going to? Naruto can help your friend use my power. Naruto looked up to the pale woman. Her hair was a white blonde color, and her eyes were pale blue. She was wearing a white kimono with a silver sash. Who are you? Are you an elemental spirit like Hoashi-san? He's the spirit of fire. Hoashi is my older brother. I am Kazayum, the spirit of wind. Flashback, Naruto frowned slightly as he activated his Ryamigan and threw a kunai towards the Kiri ninja he was fighting. The ninja quickly moved out of the way and did some hand signs. He shouted Suiten, Tepidama, took a deep breath and spat a large spherical ball of water at Naruto. Naruto was blown backwards by the attack. Am he's too experienced. I can't dodge his attacks forever. The haha, looks like you're losing this fight pretty badly kid. Who the hell are you? I'm the great Hoashi, the spirit of fire. Naruto jumped out of the way of the ninja and kicked him into a nearby tree. He looked up at the so-called great Hoashi. Hoashi had long blood red hair and laughing onyx eyes. He wore a crimson kimono with a gold sash around his waist. Naruto shrugged and took out some shuriken. You don't look that great. What can you do anyway? I can control fire. Fire can give me light, it can cook food, and it can even dance for me. How about burning things to death? Explode some dynamites something dangerous. Naruto threw his shuriken at the Kiri ninja, while waiting for Hoashi's answer. Fire can do that, obviously. Then how about lending me a hand here? Pretty please with a mini fireball on top. Of course, kid. By the way, you know that yours allows you to see us elemental spirits. You wouldn't be able to control elements otherwise. Ayubi sensei didn't tell me that. Your sensei probably. The Kiri ninja moaned and got up holding a kunai. No time for this, we have to fight now. Oashi nodded and focused on the fight, his laughing eyes replaced with stern onyx eyes. Naruto's eyes widened as he felt Hoashi's strength leak into him. He held out his hand, and an unknown word leapt out of his mouth. Katen. A small fireball laid in his outstretched hand. Naruto stared at the dancing flame mesmerized by its light glow. Throw it, kid. The fire will listen to you. Naruto smiled and threw the fireball, willing it to be bigger. The fireball engulfed the ninja, frying him to a crisp. Naruto mouthed the wow as he looked at the burnt remains of the ninja he was fighting. The job didn't think you would have done it. If you didn't think I would win, why did you give me your power? To see what would happen of course, Hoashi. Flashback ends. When death sounds good. Let's do this. Kazayum nodded as Naruto put Yujito down. He smiled as Kazayum blended her power with his own. Shinryu laughed maniacally. Finally decided to fight Brad. Why but of course after all I must protect someone close to me. Ha. Hey. It doesn't matter. I will still kill the demon. Naruto smiled and held his hand out whispering Katen. A fireball appeared in his hand. He threw it and smirked as Shinryu jumped out of the way. If that's all you're going to do, I might as well finish it now. Naruto whispered Katen once more and threw the fireball. He shouted Cage Hadama no dot as one fireball split it into hundreds of fireballs. He smiled and said Fuiten. He raised his arms and brought them down quickly. A large gust of wind blew the fireball straight at Shinryu. He looked at the fireballs in surprise as he was knocked backwards into a big rock. Yujito looked at this in surprise and looked over at Naruto. Naruto was breathing heavily and on the ground. Yujito's orange chakra disappeared as she ran over to him. Naruto. Are you alright? I'm fine, Yujito. Just a bit tired, that's all. Kit. Are you alright? Otu-san. I'm fine. Is the girl with you? Yay, Yujito's with me. Ayubi looked at Yujito carefully and smiled a little. Naruto looked at Yujito and was greeted once again by the sight of the two-tailed cat shadow. I would recognize that chakra from anywhere Nibi no Nikomata. The Nibi is in me. A two-tailed cat do you think I would be able to meet Nibi, Naruto's Otu-san. 
you can call me Kai Ubi. And I'm sure you'll be able to meet Nibi. I'll just bring us to your mind Kitsu Ninpu, Shinsho Nayasho. In Yujido's mind, Yujido and Naruto looked in amazement at the lush forest in front of them. Kai Ubi had a very amused look on his face. A large boy spoke out to them. It looks like I have visitors. Yujido shrank being Naruto and grabbed his hand. Kai Ubi laughed. It's alright, that's just Nibi Kai Ubi shouted loudly, Oi Nibi, we're not in the mood for a game of hide and seek. Show yourself. That annoying voice can only be that Kai Ubi. Fine. I am located in a cage in the middle of the forest. It will be easy to find me. Kai Ubi shrugged as he, Naruto and Yujito ran into the forest. After a while they stopped at a large golden cage in the forest. Inside the cage was a large orange and black cat. Large amber eyes looked at Kai Ubi, while two long tails waved idly behind it. It took you long enough. I was beginning to think you got lost. Are you Nibi Yujito said while looking at the massive feline. Of course kitten, nice to see you're not dead. By the way, what brings you here? Something tells me you didn't just come here to exchange pleasantries. Nibi what if I told you I could release you from your cage without harming your container? Impossible. No one can do that. Well then guess what? My student did the impossible. He managed to release me from my cage. Amazing Nibi looked down at Naruto, well then kid. Are you going to release me? I'll release you only on one condition. Naruto said while walking the length of Bibi's cafe. I'll release you if you take Yujito as your student. Hidden is my student. Sure why not I'd love to. Alright then Naruto swiftly did a long string of hand signs. Ninpu, Daidakoro no dot. Anibi's cage started to shake, and the large golden gate started to open. The seal fell off the cage doors and slowly disintegrated into dust. In a bright flash of light, the cage disappeared and in its place was a woman. The woman had long black hair tipped with a dark orange color. Her slanted amber eyes glanced mischievously at Kai Ubi. She was wearing a dark blue kimono decorated with a large cat. The kanji for two was on the back of the kimono. A long dark orange sash was tied around her waist. Two cat eyes decorated her head while two tails swung languidly behind her. Very good, Kit. You've released the Nibi from her cage. Wow Kai Ubi, your student is very good. Nibi smiled slightly as she walked towards Yujito. Well kitten, I'm your teacher now so I might as well give you some of my power. Yujito's eyes widened at the transfer of power. Naruto blushed a bit and looked away. Yujito's eyes were as slanted as ever. Two orange and black cat ears were on top of her head, and a long orange and black tail swung behind her. Yujito-chan, you look very nice, Naruto coughed out. Yujito slightly blushed as she noticed the added suffix at the end of her name. She quickly hit her ears and tail and grinned while looking at Naruto. A black tattoo appeared on her left arm. Oh, so you're a lefty, Yujito-chan. Naruto smiled while showing Yujito his tattoo tail, I'm a righty. Alright then, enough chit chat Nibi stood up. What are we going to do now? Ayubi smiled fearly as he answered Nibi's question. First we'll train Kid and Yujito. Then well let's wait till we're done training. Translations, Suiten, Tepidama Water Style, Bullet, Hayden Fire Style, Page Hadama no Jutsu Shadow Fireball Technique, Yuten Wind Style, Kitsun Ninpu, Shinsho Nayasho Kitsun Ninja Art, Mind Entrance, Ninpu, Dedakora no Jutsu Ninja Art, Release from Prison Technique. A tall black haired man walked down a path towards a lake. The lake was tranquil and beautiful. A small shrine stood near the lake's shore. He sighed to himself constantly. What a beautiful day it is today. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, I'm sure today will be an enlightened day for people all over. He hummed to himself as he sat down by the lake's shore and stared at his reflection. His black eyes stared back at him. He dipped his hand into the lake and started to finger comb his hair. A rumbling voice spoke to him in his mind. Up, the man muttered in him. As he combed out a tangle in his hair. They're coming, he pouted, already. They didn't even let me have enough time to, up. Who cares about your hair? They do not care if they capture you with your messy hair or not. They are advancing quickly. If you do not survive this, I will eat you, hair and all. He stood up and shook his head slightly. He then focused his mind and sent a wave of chakra out. He sensed his chakra go over smaller life forms and people who were going for an early walk. He narrowed his eyes as he sensed two people coming towards him at high speeds. He slid out his najinata and grumbled under his breath. Bam, why did you have to be right? Stupid Rakubi. Well in a way, this is enlightenment, isn't it, Hyogen? I have nothing intelligent to say. Well. What do you think? The tall blonde said as he walked out of the store. A black cloak adorned his body. On the back of the cloak was a massive golden fox. His golden hair fell to the middle of his back. His hair partly covered his left eye and had reddish black tips. His eyes were a stunning violet color that would put amethysts to shame. A pair of sharp canines jutted out when he smiled. He struck a pose. Do I look cool or what? Yay, go on and ask that in the middle of a street. You don't need any more fangirls, Kit. Kaiubi looks unchanged. 
His long red hair was untied and flowing in the wind. He rolled his sapphire eyes but chuckled nonetheless. A younger blonde stepped out of the store next. Her blonde hair was tied in a low ponytail which reached her waist. She had slanted emerald eyes and sharp canines as well. She wore an ebony yukata with printed phoenixes on it. Her obi was printed with cherry blossoms. She rolled her eyes at the two pickering males. She turned her head and opened the door again pulling a black-haired woman out. Nibi glared at Yujito and huffed before grabbing Kaiubi's arm. Kaiubi kun Am I pretty Nibi pouted as Naruto laughed at Kaiubi's slight blush. Yo you're very pretty, Nibi. Kaiubi managed. Naruto laughed even harder and supported himself on Yujito's shoulder. Alright. Let's do something besides shopping. How about Naruto thought for a moment before smiling. We can go to another country. Kaiubi looked at Naruto with a funny look on his face before replying. You do realize that practically every single country we have been to has marked us down in the book, right? And you want to add more? Are you crazy? First of all, we're in Konoha. Right after that, we get marked in Kumos. Then in I was. Kaiubi continued ranting as Naruto, Yujito, and Nibi watched him. And then, somehow, you managed to steal the hero's water of the waterfall village. Right after that, we get booted from Kusa due to you causing the last specimen of an extinct plant to be destroyed. Dare I go on? Naruto sweat dropped and looked guilty. Nah, you don't have to go on how about I'll be on my best behavior from now on he looked hopefully at Kaiubi. Kaiubi muttered under his breath, at least you haven't done anything in aim yet clearing his throat, he spoke in a louder tone, fine. But I'll choose our next destination. He whipped a map from behind his back and studied it carefully. A feral grin appeared on his face. I know. Let's go to Kiri. Naruto looked dumbfounded. Nikki's smile was strained. Yujito just sighed. Yujito spoke in a mild tone. Ayubi you do realize that Kurigakur is a few countries over, right? And we have to cut through fire country to get there, right? Kaiubi just grinned. The tall black-haired man walked down a path towards a lake. The lake was tranquil and beautiful. A small shrine stood near the lake's shore. He sighed to himself constantly. What a beautiful day it is today. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, I'm sure today will be an enlightened day for people all over. He hummed to himself as he sat down by the lake's shore and stared at his reflection. His black eyes stared back at him. He dipped his hand into the lake and started to finger comb his hair. A rumbling voice spoke to him in his mind. Idling, the man muttered in him. As he combed out a tangle in his hair. They're coming, he pouted, already. They didn't even let me have enough time to, idling. Who cares about your hair? They do not care if they capture you with your messy hair or not. They are advancing quickly. If you do not survive this, I will eat you, hair and all. He stood up and shook his head slightly. He then focused his mind and sent a wave of chakra out. He sensed his chakra go over smaller life forms and people who were going for an early walk. He narrowed his eyes as he sensed two people coming towards him at high speeds. He slid out his Najinata and grumbled under his breath. Damn, why did you have to be right? Stupid Rakuti. Well in a way, this is an enlightenment, isn't it, Yudakata? I have nothing intelligent to say. Naruto yawned as he strolled down the road out of aim. Everybody else followed him at a slightly slower pace. Kaiubi had a pleased look on his face. Hit. Just for a few more minutes, then we'll be out of this village and not marked in Aim's book. Naruto turned towards Kaiubi and nodded enthusiastically while continuing to walk. He turned his head back towards the road and promptly crashed into someone. The person got up and stared at them. Naruto stared back. She had blue hair and a flower made up of paper. Her hazel eyes narrowed as she leapt back with paper suddenly flying around her. Kaiubi immediately rushed forward and motioned for Naruto to back off. How you get into these situations, I'll never know, Kit Kaiubi quickly turned and snarled at the blue-haired woman. Who are you? My son he turned towards Naruto and nodded, gives his apologies for accidentally bumping into you. Naruto nodded, agreeing with them. The woman stared down at them, not speaking a word. That is for the Kaiubi, and if my information is correct, that girl contains the Nibi. Those other two I couldn't care less about. However, I can't take them down at the same time. Should I report back to Nagato with this? Or should I take my chances and try to defeat them, Conan came to a decision. You have been given a reprieve, daughter calm voice rang out in the now empty road. We will capture you all. The Akatsuki will win. She disappeared as a swirl of paper. Nibi stared at the place Conan was a few seconds ago. She turned towards the rest of the group and voiced a question that was in all of the heads. What was that? 